Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Rocket Monday, we're going to talk about Caltech Space Solar Power Demonstrator. So let's dive deep into it. So Caltech SSPD, yeah, meaning this puppy, or this puppy, was launched in Transporter 6 mission successfully in uh, 6.55 a.m. morning, uh, 3 January 2023. So it's a very recent mission and uh, it was done by SpaceX on Falcon 9. So everything is fine. Now be mindful, this is a whole slew of prototypes, not just one thing. So they have three primary things that they wanted to test. So they have three things. Now how would you keep three things in one location? So make sure they took that objective, they utilize this bus. Now this bus is momentous Virgo ride space as a main bus. That's what they did. Uh, like this company provides you to uh, like a sort of private service after SpaceX have done their job, meaning SpaceX puts you into lower orbit, this puppy can take you from low Earth orbit to specific low Earth orbit that you are looking for, or even higher orbit if that is desirable. And you can specify, basically talk with them, it's like, hey, we need this kind of solar power, we need this kind of uh, attitude adjustment, whatever have you. So this com uh, Caltech basically worked with them to create a base. On that base, they did uh, put their experiments. And the idea of the experiments were prototype validation in space environment, meaning the idea is they want to put solar satellites in space that collect significant energy as in megawatts to gigawatts to hopefully enough to run whole nations and beam it down to earth. Now that is a big ass concept but you need to start somewhere. So this was the prototype testing stage. So what were the parts? Parts were D-O-L-C-E. Uh, this puppy. Basically the idea is um, they have realized very early on because NASA also worked on this is that every other company that wanted to do something space solar they wanted to build one giant unit. Now there is pros and cons to all of that however whenever you want to do that one giant unit it cost skyrocket. So the idea was they're gonna do it with what they call flying carpets. So this is one flying carpet. Now be mindful this is not full scale this is small scale mock-up. The idea is they're gonna be uh, like size of a washing machine one meter by one meter by one meter and uh, when they expand that puppy should expand to 50 meter by 50 meter by 50 meter. No, not third, third dimension would be 50 meter but you get the point like it will expand exponentially in surface area. So how would you test that expansion mechanism works? So they tested it in space. Now this is a ground testing but uh, that was the idea They test this puppy in space. They did that. Then they had ALBA. Now ALBA is this payload bay and the idea with this is they have 32 types of photovoltaic cells. Now you're like, wait a minute, why do you have so many? Well, in space environment is a bit different. So silicon chemistry that works flawlessly on earth without any hassle may not last as long as you may think in space. So space has a whole ecosystem of solar panels that are very custom made, very uh, varying in cost because be mindful, some projects have tri-junction solar cells which are very efficient but they cost arm and a leg and a kidney. So fundamentally speaking, how would you know which cells are best? Well, you take sample of each. So 32 samples were put into the system and this will give them long-term data. It's like, hey, we put it there. How does it handle going through like, you know, uh, cold and hot, cold and hot. It's like, where is the cold and hot? Well, uh, when you are in the sun side, it's uh, hot. When you are in the shadow side, it's cold. So how do you handle that thermal shock? How do you handle the radiation environment of the space? So how would you test it? Put all of them and measure their power output. So that's how they are figuring it out, which would be the best price to performance ratio. Then they had the third unit, which is this puppy, M-A-P-L-E, -E, Maple, uh, this puppy. So this puppy had a 32 uh, phase array antenna because this there is light here and antenna there. Now antenna is critical aspect. They want to use microwave. They had to test, can they transfer microwave energy? Let that be clear, not signal. We can transfer signal, that's your Wi-Fi. But can we transfer energy from space from point A to point B? So point A, point B. Now you'll be like, wait a minute, that's just this box. Well, yes, that's how far it is. But point is nobody has done it so far. So they needed, again, prototype. You have to try it, you have to start it. Was that done? Can it be done? Somebody has to do it. Somebody has to take the first step. This was the first step. So what's the result? Well, result is most of the tech they put there, it worked. So basically they successfully managed to lit up the LEDs. Everything worked fine. Proof of concept, go. So that's there. Now, why they want to focus so much on microwave? Well, basically beam forming on microwave is easy, meaning you can collect a lot of energy and you can make a pseudo uh, beam even with a flat sheet. 
meaning if you have a flat sheet in space that is super easy to uh, dis uh, basically assemble and just it's just a flat sheet it, there is no structure to it you can still phase the beam such a way that uh, at the ground it's very concentrated and benefit of that would be like if you go through here you won't have so much energy density that it will cause harm even to birds and when you go to the center point you have a lot of efficiency so there is some good reason to do this then again they tested it it worked everything is awesome they transfer few watts from here to there that's good and the, this was their ground station where they were monitoring all this stuff so this is the result result is like from a prototype point of view good i have no idea why the heck they have not released the video because they had a lot of cameras on board now then we introduced a weird player that is guru and this G-U-R-U and uh, Guru is odd simply because they are very important part of it. They may be the backer for it and Caltech may be just like a facilitator. So they are important that I know. However, uh, they went too far. Like I looked into their presentation. Be mindful this presentation is recent as in like few months ago and he has been talking into uh, basically TED Talks after showing that we have successfully launched and all that. And uh, the guy went full Li-Fi. And if you are not familiar with Li-Fi, there was a bit of brain damage recently randomly happened in around uh, late 2010 is that uh, Wi-Fi is not good enough. We need something better. We're going to switch to LED lights. Yes, the lights that we have. Now, uh, people were like, okay, LEDs can blink so fast uh, that we can do that. And uh, then somebody bitch slapped them and was like, bro, what if somebody turns off the light and they still want Wi-Fi? It's like, oh, yeah. Uh, what if we're going to put infrared LEDs next to it? It's like, why not just put that? Like why touch the power lines, touch this, just have the infrared. Okay, we were like, awesome. Then somebody bitch slapped them again. It's like, do you remember before Bluetooth in mobile phones, we had infrared in everything? There is a reason we abandoned that. There is a reason we do not want directional system. We want omnidirectional for Wi-Fi. There is a reason for that. We have learned it the hard way. They were like going back. So was that 100% useless? No, there was like scope of that technology kind of mutated into other things like uh, air fiber the idea is that that you have a very high laser and a small telescope both uh, like you know duplicate of this basically you one side would be telescope laser another would be telescope laser same thing so you can transmit and receive data for kilometers uh, realize, realizing lasers now did it work absolutely that's an awesome technology because if you want to connect remote location you do not have the budget for laying the fiber this is like short up take money awesome technology but here's still, this is the same technology we had in Soviet Union. This is how people used to uh, communicate inside the uh, inside the wall, so to say. So that's that happened. It's just like every time uh, Silicon Valley just gets an idea, they're like, what if we revolutionize everything? It's like, we don't need everything to be revolutionary or magic. Because again, this is a common thing. This is how Theranos happened. This is how addition happened. Uh, that uh, hydrogen truck, hululu. So idea is like, just because you can, you should. It's like, no, it's like, just check, does it make sense? Like, Li-Fi, like, the amount of hype behind Li-Fi was like, holy time. The amount of stupidity behind that was like, holy cramoly time. So, and they, they're gonna have something even more stupid. They're gonna have, like, basically, uh, light that is transmitting power. Transmitting power. And this guy actually did a demo. This is the demo. And when he crosses the uh, emitter, he was like, oh, this feels warm. It's like, yeah, obviously, it's a lot of microwave. I'm like... Uh, basically, all the inefficiency here translates to your air conditioning having to work harder. Why? Just so you can remove some wires? It's like, dude, you know we have wireless charging that can be there. You can just put small wires. And it's like, why? Like, we burnt the planet because of inefficiency. And they're like, what if we remove the wires? It's like, all you will do is require more wire for power transmission because you are wasting so much of it. So that was like very odd to me is that Guru like felt like, oh, we are working on awesome technology to transfer power from space to Earth. Awesome. It cannot be done by wire. Awesome. So that's what you're developing microwave. Awesome. Using microwave on earth is lame idea. It's like, oh, we're going to have like one there and then your drone can keep flying there. It's like, no. So I genuinely don't get it. It's like why this individual is like, uh, let's remove the power wire and it's like showing a disaster and all that. I'm like, no. This is the same thing, this is the exact same thing. It's like, just because you have an idea does not mean you have to reinvent everything. Like, a wheel is good, don't reinvent the wheel. So this 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 is where it felt very odd. Like, so far, Caltech was like, okay, this is technology, this is how we're gonna do the testing, everything was awesome. The moment this puppy got involved, I was like, what the hell are you doing? But I get it, like, from a space point of view, it's awesome technology. Using it in Earth is like trying to monetize something, maybe. 
So what we can expect in the future? Well, uh, there is a lot of work that still needs to be done. Let that be very clear. While they did transfer power using microwave, they did not transfer power from space to Earth, which was the critical point. Uh, and again, it's not that uh, they failed, it's just that was not the intent. Here, that would be the intent in the future pro uh, prototypes. So at this point in time, we do not know if you make, let's say, a solar array that is like, let's say, one megawatt. Uh, how much oomph you're gonna actually get on earth we have no real world testing of that so that's a serious issue we may be thinking oh we're gonna get like almost 70 percent down and then we actually tested it like barely lucky getting 30 percent that will change the economic economics of it so we really need to do that test without that we do not know the real world efficiency is unknown at this point in time which is a big if now on top of that if i were an investor or a betting man i would not put stock on solar panels now like wait a minute solar panel worked amazingly well on earth and they displaced uh, basically solar thermal on earth now you have to understand earth has few things uh, two of those things are gravity and atmosphere now gravity makes your structure limited you cannot just make a huge dish you have to support that dish against gravity which means uh, the dish that only requires like few atoms thick of aluminum to reflect more than enough light to be viable you need to have millimeter thicks of glass then you have to have meter thicks of metal scaffolding to support all of it gravity is issue on top of that glass needs to be cleaned regularly in space in thermal system all you need is a foil that is taut done go home sweet dreams foil and we have that foil uh, it's working literally in uh, james Webb space telescope that's the foil bass so that foil structure will work more than well enough like that's good so in space the solar thermal actually gains far more power and the primary reason why solar thermal will work better is that we can make the hot even hotter why because if you take that one square um, area square kilometer area on earth and if you try to focus all that light into one spot atmosphere will play a very big role because as light gets concentrated more and more photon is getting heated your air is heating up unnecessarily you want a hot spot to heat up not the air you are wasting a lot of energy even though your surface area is huge do the same thing in space you no longer have to worry about air leaching your energy away you get hot really hot like depending on design you can actually achieve almost melting temperature of any known metal even tungsten so you can get hot, really, really hot in the same surface area. That's also awesome. Then we come to the cold reservoir. This is where it gets interesting. Assuming you can get most of the energy out using turbine, the amount of energy you have to dissipate would be less. And because space is zero, as in like, unless you are focusing on a thermal body, you are at absolute zero, you can dump a lot of energy in. So the temperature delta would be huge. And this is one of the concepts. So this disk is huge because again, radiator need to be huge. Look at ISS, the radiators are huge. Uh, but the boiler would be very small and boiler would be receiving all the concentrated energy. Nothing in it is super complex. However, it's one big structure rather than multiple small. It's like ISS but for power. And this will give AC benefit of AC power is that it's much easier to create into microwave. Uh, but unless I'm not sure, like uh, you can generate microwave directly without having too much conversion in efficiency. But problem would be timing circuit if you want to do phase shift. So that would be the pros and cons of it, getting AC power out of it. However, we are really good at converting AC into DC nowadays. So that's not that big of a deal. The working fluid the companies is proposing is hydrogen because it will, again, there is no oxygen around it. So it won't go boom, even if it leaks. And uh, hydrogen has much, much more efficient uh, uh, thermal transfer. We use hydrogen on earth to cool generators. So we know hydrogen is awesome. We just don't have the luxury of using it in the main turbine. Our turbines will get 3 to 4% more efficient. Here it will be like, damn, we can cross almost most uh, PV system, even if it's a multi-junction PV system. So this is better in long term if you scale it up. But I do expect PV to be the, you know, stepping stone because we need, at some point we need to test uh, like how much energy we actually get. We send like 100 kilowatts from space, how much we actually get. Only then we can figure out like uh, is PV makes sense, does this sort of system make sense or the whole idea is bust. So more of work needs to be done before we are like we good solar because ideally you have to put this puppy in uh, geostationary. Why? Uh, the shadow side would be only one to two hours. It will be in sun for 20 plus hours, more than enough to actually run a nation. And for that little time, you can rely on hydropower or uh, like, you know, wind for that only that duration or just have a good pumped hydro or if you are like USA where you have three time zones and uh, geostationary orbits are allocated based on your land mass you would literally have offset enough where it's like one or uh, satellite power satellite would always be in the sun it can be done so 
future is a bit unknown while this is a good start for people who really want to do into this they need a bit more cooking like train has just moved in the station it has not left the station yet so we need to be a bit more patient so this was my presentation on basically caltech solar power demonstrator hopefully you have liked it learn from it in that case please see the like button share it amongst your friend that will help me a lot if you didn't like it didn't enjoy it i urge you to press dislike press it twice to show me extra disappointment please leave a comment because i do try to reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching